What is up, everybody? Joe Everest, your fence expert. Pretty exciting day today. So we had just released the review video where I saw a couple different wire weaving options or operations. One using a machine. We later learned it's a burgundy machine. And then a hand weaving operation somewhere overseas. I got a pretty interesting message the day this thing released from Gabe over at Brenton Manufacturing up in Casper, Wyoming, inviting me up to see their Burgundy wire weaving machine, how it works, and let me get all the nitty gritty information on the machine, and I uh, kind of generally view their operation. So, like any fence geek out there, my answer was absolutely yes. I've booked my airfare, and I'm on my way. Let's go. What is up, everybody, and welcome back. Through the magic of YouTube editing, here we are in Casper, Wyoming. Now, yesterday when I came in, it was a little bit uh, odd. It was 50 some odd degrees, no snow, and I thought, this is not the Wyoming I've heard about. But then I woke up this morning, snow on the ground and 11 degrees. So, here we are. First and foremost, I appreciate you having me out. Yeah. Uh, you, you guys were grac so gracious yesterday to take me through the entire plant here and show me kind of what makes it tick. And I tell you what, this is an impressive operation. Well, thank you. Thank you. The plan was we were going to take the YouTube audience uh, step by step through the wire weaving machine that they saw in a recent reaction video. But those things are a little bit loud. <laughs> they are. So what I'm going to do, guys, is I took plenty of B-roll to where I'm going to walk you guys through step by step with a voiceover uh, to give you guys a really good idea on exactly how those machines work. Coming up next. All right, guys. So first off, we start at the smooth strand where the whole process starts. Now, this has already been woven through the machine. The machine is now drawing it from these coils through the pulleys that we're going to see here in a minute. So it's getting drawn through these pulleys, and actually it's a series of pulleys that are both pulling the wire, but also tensioning the wire as well. So the strand's getting pulled through the series of pulleys into the system that's going to start forming it into the half diamonds that we're used to seeing chain link consist of. It's a pretty quick process. This wire is moving at a pretty high rate of speed. So this is showing us exactly how the machine is set up and where it is in the process. So whether we're talking about diamond counts, the blade speed is how fast the machine is running. Uh, picket count is how many individual pickets have been run, uh, both in this set and the what it's, what it's set for and what it's actually run. It's also seeing, it's also showing how many rolls have been removed and then how many rolls have been made on the day. So this is where the magic happens. The wire is brought into this system of tooling uh, that forms it both in the diamond pattern, but also it's weaving it with the other strand that has also come in. It's making two pickets at once here. You can see the blade cutting it at a predetermined uh, length. So it's actually keeping track of how many diamonds run through this machine. And at a predetermined diamond count, which is what was said in the screen before, it will stop and cut the uh, individual pickets or both pickets at once. And these blades are one, incredibly strong because they're cutting through galvanized steel, but also incredibly sharp because it's not leaving a burr at the end of that, which I thought you might end up seeing. So what you see here is the inner workings of the magic of this machine. And so you see a, a cylinder type worm drive around a rectangular tooling uh, that's giving the diamond the shape. So the worm drive is really establishing how wide those diamonds are. And then the rectangular tooling is giving the wire its shape. And as you can see, it's weaving two pickets at the same time. It's really something to see. Here's a good look at it in action. You can tell why the cover's on this machine because it makes quite the mess. It's really impressive to me the speed at which this machine runs at. And this machine really wasn't working at full at full force either. It, they, they were saying it could be tuned up a little bit more to go a little bit faster if production needed. But the faster this machine runs, the more misweaves and overall mistakes it could make. So there's a sweet spot that uh, Brenton seemed to have this thing dialed in at. So here we see the wire being woven over a series of tensioners. Now it looks like they were weaving knuckle twist at the time. So the far turret is knuckling the wire and then the turret closest to us on the right is uh, twisting the wire. A closer look at the knuckling turret.
and a closer look at the twisting turret. Now you'll notice on both the knuckling and the twisting turret, there's a finger that pops up right where the top of that diamond needs to be so that either the knuckler or the twisting turret don't twist or knuckle the wire too far. It makes for a perfect top diamond. So this arm is a tensioning arm. It makes sure that there's a consistent pressure placed on the wire because it's rolling the wire at a different speed that it's producing the wire pickets. So this tensioning arm makes sure that a consistent pressure stays on the wire while it's rolling it up. So on the back end, this is the uh, chain link take up portion. So as, as you see, it's rolling the wire up. Now the, the standard tension or the regulated tension is important so that you get a nice clean roll so you don't get some mishap in rolls that uh, if you've been in the industry for any length of time, you've seen one or two of these. So what he's getting ready to do here is the machine has indicated that at a certain picket count, he's at 50 feet. So uh, the picket is, so that what happens is the knuckling and the twisting turret miss a picket at the 50 foot mark. So he knows that he's looking for this unknuckled picket so that then he'll pull it out to complete the 50 foot roll. He'll also then put the picket in to start the next roll. All right, guys, we are in for a treat. So last day of year, I was getting ready to start packing up when they let me know they're gonna start running the vinyl extrusion machine. I've seen this thing run on their videos on their Facebook. I can't wait to see it run in person. I'm actually gonna grab the camera and walk you guys through this whole process because as a fence guy, I think this stuff is amazing. Let me grab you real quick. All right, guys, so here we have the uh, complete extruding setup. We'll go a little bit more detail, but uh, just the size alone is pretty impressive. Uh, we're gonna start off with just regular galvanized uh, strands, similar to what they're weaving across the room on the uh, chain link machine. It's gonna go up through some tensioners to make sure that that strand is really nice and tight, no kinks or anything like that. It's gonna go through a cleaner, a wire wheel cleaner to make sure that wire is super clean. It then it goes through some straighteners, making sure that the wire that comes out is incredibly straight so that when the vinyl gets applied to it, it gets extruded over it rather, that it's nice and evenly coated. Now this is the extruder itself. As you guys can see, that's pretty hot. It's about 350 degrees. Uh, it's heating up these pellets. So the pellets you can see are in this big bin. The pellets are sucked up into the hopper and uh, that's feeding them into the tube. Let me show you guys what these pellets look like real quick. So they're vinyl beads, little vinyl pellets. I mean, it's, it's crazy. I mean, it almost looks like, uh, I don't know, milk chocolate pellets kind of. So those are being fed into this hopper here. So and then it feeds it down this conveyor belt. Each one of these blowers is heating it up to 350 degrees. It comes out again, roughly 350 degrees into this water bath. Now the water bath, it actually isn't as cold as I thought. I thought it'd be really cold. It's roughly room temperature. I think they said 62, 63 degrees. At the end of this, there's an air dryer, blow all the water off of it, clean it up, and then it's gonna come across this trolley system into this weaver that's gonna just sit and coil it up really nice and pretty. So when the coil is done, they'll go ahead and pause, cut it, this rolls out, and they'll unload it over to a bin similar to this. So this is, guys, from, for a fence guy, this system is just incredibly interesting. I, I've never really seen where vinyl extruded wire comes from, but here it is, here's the end result. Now this will either go into uh, weaving wire for chain link mesh, or it can also uh, get turned into black vinyl coated steel uh, wire ties, hook ties. So yeah, thought you guys might like a sneak peek into this. All right guys, so that's a quick look on what makes these wire weaving machines work, how they tick. I tell you what, it's a, still a little bit like magic, even though I watched the whole thing happen. It, it still is a little bit mystifying to me. If you guys have any sort of questions or comments about how the machines work, drop them in the comments below. I'd love to talk to you guys there. I know I thanked you in the beginning, but I wanna thank you again for having me out. This is an impressive operation. I am blown away. Well, thank you, and thank you for coming out. It was nice having you. So. <laughs> yeah, I had a great time. I really did. Yeah. 
Well, guys, I'm Joe Evers, the fence expert, reminding you that good fences make good neighbors. And I'll see you next time.